And one rocket explosion. On July 3rd, 1969, 17 days before the Americans landed on the moon, the Soviet Union's N-1 heavy lift rocket lifted off on its second launch attempt. However, a loose bolt created a series of malfunctions that resulted in what is considered the most massive non-nuclear man-made explosion in history. Studies to develop the N-1 program began as early as 1959, two years before Yuri Gagarin became the first man to fly into space when the Soviet space program had the edge over the Americans. Developed to compete against NASA's Saturn V rocket in the race to the moon, the fully loaded Soviet N-1L3 heavy lift rocket stood 105 meters tall and weighed 2,788 tons. However, the N-1 program was rushed in 1961 when U.S. President John F. Kennedy announced that his administration was committed to giving NASA as much funds as required to land an American man on the moon within the decade. Meanwhile, the genius engineer and designer behind the Soviet space program, Sergei Korolev, was given a small amount of funding to initiate the project. To gain more funds for N-1, Korolev attempted to convince the top brass that such a powerful heavy-lift rocket could also deliver nuclear payloads as heavy as the Tsar Baba, launched in October of 1961. Still, the military top brass was not entirely convinced and did not pay much attention to N-1. Development was troublesome and underfunded, and it became even worse after Korolev passed away in 1966. Three years later, N-1 was complete and comprised three stages that would carry the L-3 lunar payload into low Earth orbit with two cosmonauts aboard. One stage was for translunar injection, another for mid-course corrections, lunar orbit insertion, and lunar surface descent. The third was meant for a safe return to Earth. As N-1 lifted off in July of 1969 in its second attempt, a loose bolt destroyed a fuel pump, which led the automatic engine control to shut down 29 out of the 30 rocket engines mid-air. Over 2,500 tons of liquid oxygen and kerosene exploded with a force of 7 kilotons, delaying the Soviet space program for 18 months. The four attempts to launch N-1 failed miserably, with the second becoming the biggest artificial non-nuclear explosion to date. A fifth launch was suspended in 1974, and the project was officially cancelled two years later in 1976. N-1 would go down in history as one of the most significant failures of the space race. Tsar Bama. During one of the rising points of the Cold War, the Soviet Union detonated a nuclear bomb called Kuzkinamat, meaning we will show you. The bomb was also called Tsar Bama, or Emperor of Bombs, and upon its ignition on October 30th, 1961, it was the most powerful nuclear device ever detonated on the planet. Tsar Bama was an AN-602 bomb, which was a modification of the RN-202 device. Development began in the mid-1950s, when the U.S. held the supremacy of nuclear capabilities, and both bombs were to serve as nuclear deterrents against the Western world. The device weighed approximately 27,000 kilograms and yielded over 50 megatons of TNT, ten times the combined power of all conventional explosives used during World War II. Such a powerful device could only be carried by a heavily modified Tu-95V release aircraft that dropped it 4,000 meters above the dry nose cape of Severny Island in Russia via parachute. The blast from the explosion was so large that its fireball reached a height of about 10.5 kilometers and was seen from 950 kilometers away. Its shockwave circled the Earth three times. Although the Tsar Bama dropping was intended to be a top-secret detonation for purely scientific purposes, it was detected by an American KC-135 aircraft codenamed Lightspeed Alpha that was monitoring near the area. The aircraft had its anti-radiation paint scorched from the magnitude of the explosion. Still, it made it back safely and with solid evidence of what the Soviet scientists were truly capable of. As a result of Tsar Bama's detonation, the U.S. paused the development of its own nuclear device to sign the 1963 treaty banning nuclear weapons tests in the atmosphere, outer space, and underwater in Moscow, which would only allow test detonations of nuclear weapons being carried out underground.
Thea Impact. It is believed that the largest explosion that affected our planet was likely the result of an impact between Earth and a Mars-sized protoplanet four and a half billion years ago. Named after the mythical Greek titan who gave birth to the moon goddess Selene, Thea struck Earth at a velocity of approximately four kilometers per second and is credited to have caused the formation of the moon. According to several theories, a protoplanet sank its iron core into the Earth's young one and ejected a significant portion of mantle material that quickly coalesced into the moon and also primed Earth for life. The explosion had a yield of 30 exatons of TNT, which was over 100 million times more lethal than the explosion that extinguished the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. The story has come to be known in scientific circles as the Giant Impact Hypothesis, the Big Splash, or the Thea Impact. It has also been favored by several scientists as the explanation behind the formation of the moon. And for the first time in decades, those scientists may prove that the hypothesis is real after recent discoveries have proven that remains of Thea are buried deep inside the moon's surface. This development is based on evidence gathered from numerous studies on rocks collected during the U.S. Apollo moon landings. Lunar samples have shown that the moon's oxygen isotopes are similar to those of Earth, but different from those of other solar system objects. However, other studies have pointed out that around 80% of the moon's composition should be made up of reformed Thea remains, which must be very different from the Earth's. The samples that can be used to study the moon are very limited, but future expeditions may bring vast knowledge about the science behind the satellite, including the giant impact hypothesis. SN-2007-BI The largest supernova ever recorded was observed in 2007 by the nearby supernova factory of the U.S. Department of Energy when a supergiant star 200 times bigger than the Sun was blown apart by runaway thermonuclear reactions. All stars eventually burn out, but it doesn't happen the same way to each. The Sun, for example, is expected to fade away into a white dwarf while other stars will explode and leave behind a neutron star. Some stars will try to explode, but the lack of sufficient force will make them succumb to a black hole. Others, like SN-2007-BI, explode without leaving any trace behind. The explosions with no trace are called PISNE, or Pair Instability Supernovae, and it's widely believed by the scientific community that the very first stars, also known as POP3 stars, disappeared this way. It is believed that SN-2007-BI was the first pair instability supernovae ever witnessed, a type of supernova triggered by gamma-ray-driven antimatter production. The star was so massive that its oxygen core began to release energetic photons that created pairs of electrons and antimatter positrons. The matter and antimatter annihilated each other, causing the star to collapse and ignite its oxygen core in a massive nuclear explosion that obliterated the entire star. No remnants were left, except for a supernova a hundred times brighter than a typical one. Still, as it's believed that SN-2007-BI was more likely a superluminous supernova, it is also true that no POP3 stars may have been observed as of today. Gamma Ray Burst In April of 2013, Astronomers observed the most significant and brightest cosmic explosion ever recorded with an energy of 94 billion electric volts. The event, a gamma-ray burst labeled GRB-130427A, produced a jet of matter that came close to moving at the speed of light. Gamma-ray bursts are the universe's most luminous explosions. According to NASA astronomers, GRBs occur when giant stars run out of nuclear fuel and collapse under their own weight. Upon exploding, the jets interact with gases liberated by the star and cause bright afterglows that fade with time. Discovered by NASA's SWIFT satellite, the GRB-130-427A gamma-ray burst was five times more intense than the previous record holder. It was formed when a super-dense star, one 20 to 30 times more massive than the Sun, collapsed into a new black hole. The explosion occurred much closer than most gamma-ray bursts, some 3.6 billion light-years away, allowing it to outshine everything else in the night sky for several seconds. 
Julia McHenry, a scientist from the Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, said to the press, quote, We've waited a long time for a gamma ray burst this shockingly, eye-wateringly bright. The GRB lasted so long that a record number of telescopes on the ground were able to catch it. At the same time, space-based observations were still ongoing. GRBs can result in the apparition of a supernova at the same site a week after the outburst. And Goddard's Neil Gerrels, the principal investigator for SWIFT, added in 2013, quote, This GRB is in the closest 5% of bursts, so the big push now is to find an emerging supernova, which accompanies nearly all long GRBs at this distance. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of all these colossal explosions. Also, hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest content.